Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy video. Today I wanted to show you how I made this NVIDIA RTX 3090 in Blender. I'll be going through the modeling process and I'll be doing a time lapse to show the tricks and techniques that I use, then we'll go through the materials and then finally the lighting right at the end. Whenever you start out modeling something, you always want to find a reference image, so that is what I did and then I imported that into Blender. From there I added a cube and then moved it in edit mode so the origin point stayed at the center and then I mirrored it along both the X and the Y axis. For these corners I used the spin tool and what you want to do is place your cursor right at that line right there and then it will rotate around the cursor. It's a little bit tricky but just play around with it and you'll get it. From there it was just some extruding and moving around until I was happy with the result. Of course we're going to add in a bevel and then a subdivision surface to smooth it out and then comes the actual fan blade. This was a little bit tricky but I used a plane, extruded it and moved it into place and then I spent a little bit of extra time trying to get the actual uh, rotation and position of the fan. The inside is just basically the same thing, it's just another circle with some thickness and then placed in the center. I spent a lot of time moving the different vertices on the fan blade because it was a little bit tricky to get the rotation just right. So if you're following along with this, take your time with this section to get the fan blades to look pretty good. Instead of duplicating and rotating the fan blade around, we're going to be using an array modifier with an object offset. 
This part of the video is a little bit tricky to understand when you're watching a time lapse, so I'm going to describe it in detail right now. If you want to duplicate an object and have it go in a circle, it's pretty easy to do. First off, you're going to want to change the origin point to the center of your circle. And in this case, my cursor is already right there. So I'm going to right click, set origin, origin to three cursor. From there, I need to apply the rotation and the scale of the object just in case. And then we're going to add in an empty object. This is going to be the object that we're going to rotate to move the array around. I'll add in an empty plan axes and scale it down just slightly. Since we scale the object, we also need to apply the scale here. So I'm going to press Control A and click on Scale. Select your fan blade, add modifier, array, and then instead of using the relative offset, we're going to be using the object offset. Turn that on and then of course select the empty in the drop down menu or select it right there. From here, if we select the empty and press R to rotate, you'll see it's rotating around. I'm going to hold control and probably go with a value of about 50. Then I will select it and add in a bunch of other arrays. We can also select it one more time and rotate it until it's in the right position right about there. There you go. So that is how you apply a rotation in a circle. The next thing that I did is I added in an empty and parented all of the fan pieces to that empty so it's much easier to move around. So now if I select the empty and rotate it, it will rotate all of the objects at once. To parent something, just select everything and have your active object selected, press Ctrl P and parent. <laughs> side of the graphics card and what I did here is I just added in a plane, extruded outwards and then used the bevel tool to round out the corner. I selected one edge, shift D it and move it over to the side and a fast way to duplicate a bunch of times is if you press shift D and then shift R it will duplicate that movement for you. Now instead of doing what I'm doing on screen with moving every single vertice manually what I did here is I just used the knife tool and cut it all in half. Then I gave it a solidify modifier to give it some thickness and then I moved it over to the model.
What I did here is I duplicated the frame of the graphics card and then I applied the mirror modifier so I can give it some detail in the back here. Now it's time to model the part where it actually connects to the motherboard. And so here I just used a plane, or actually I used a cube, and did a little bit of basic modeling with loop cuts, extruding, to get the shape of this part. To give it some detail, I added in a bevel, but for some reason I had some issues with the bevel modifier. And then I found out later that there were some faces missing in the mesh, so I went ahead and filled those, and now the bevel looks good. Finally, the last part of the graphics card is over here on the left side. This I used a plane with a solidify modifier, and I added some loop cuts, extruding, and it was pretty easy to do from here. Just for some extra detail, I added a cylinder just to give it some random pipes in the middle here for the fan. What I did here is I parented all the objects for our graphics card to an empty, but this was actually a mistake. Since we already had a parented empty to the fan, all of those pieces actually moved back to the original position over on the right side at the front of the fan. I found this out later and I went ahead and fixed it, but what I should have done is parented the empties for the fan instead of the objects themselves. And that would have made sure the pieces stay in the correct position. Make sure you also hide the two cylinders for the fan so they don't show up in the render. For this silver chrome material on the front of the graphics card, I used a principled shader with the metallic all the way up and then a tiny bit of roughness to give it a nice reflection. For the front, I used an image of an RTX 390 logo and then noise texture with a color ramp to give it some variation in the color. To combine both the RTX logo and the noise texture, add in a mix, set the alpha of the image to the factor and then the color ramp into the top and then the image into the bottom, then that should work just fine. Position the UV map so the RTX logo is right at the center and then set the image mode to clipped in the node editor and that will only display one logo. For the rest of the pieces, I went ahead and duplicated that material and got rid of the image and then just used the noise texture with the color ramp.
it turned out really cool, so I wanted to make a video on it. But that's going to be it. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.